We want to hear it tonight. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Do you feel the presence of the Lord in this place tonight? Amen. I feel his presence here. And uh, again, as I said this morning, it is an honor to be here with you. And uh, we love being here. And thank you for all of your kindness and hospitality. And um, amen. Y'all just make us feel right at home. And uh, y'all better be careful doing that. Amen. Y'all might want us to leave. And we just feel too at home. You had trouble getting rid of us. Amen. Amen. Jeremiah chapter 20 and verse number 9. Jeremiah chapter 20 and verse number 9. Amen. Thankful for the presence of the Lord that we feel in this house. And uh, what a wonderful job this praise and worship team does in leading us into the presence of the Lord. Amen. It's so vital. Amen. Bishop quoted it earlier, but the psalmist says, Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Amen. I don't believe that's just directions on what to do when we get here, but I believe that's a key to entering into his presence, that when we begin to thank him and we begin to praise him, we're entering into his gates. We're coming before him. And uh, amen. I feel like we're in his presence right now. Amen. Jeremiah chapter 20, verse 9. Then I said, I will not make mention of him nor speak any more in his name. For his word was in my heart as a burning fire shut up in my bones, and I was weary with forbearing. And I could not stay. I could not stay. I'd like to use those last four words for our subject for this evening. I could not stay. Amen. One more time before you're seated, lift your hands to the Lord. And let's ask him to speak to us. Lord, I love you. I thank you for your word. Thank you for these good people, Lord, that have gathered together in your house to worship, to praise you, and to study your word. Pray that you would anoint every one of us in this house to receive your anointed word. You do what you want to do in this place, however you want to do it, Lord. In Jesus' name, we'll give you the praise and the glory. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. Let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Amen. You can be seated. Amen. Jeremiah, um, I, I preach about him somewhat often, and I've preached about him here, but Jeremiah is a prophet in, in the Old Testament, one of the major prophets. And Jeremiah, in my opinion, out of all of the prophets, we get the most insight into his emotional state and to how he feels and what goes on in his life. Uh, he is called the weeping prophet. Also, the book of Lamentation is a book of Jeremiah as well. And um, we see a lot of Jeremiah and his emotion and, and what he deals with and, and what goes on. And one of the reasons that he is the weeping prophet, one of the reasons that he has uh, this feeling that he has is because he is preaching to a, black, a backslidden nation that refuses to turn back to God. And the Lord will speak to Jeremiah and tell him that um, this is what I want you to say to the people. This is what I want you to speak to them. And he, he would give him a word-for-word word message on what to speak. And then he would tell him, but they're not going to hear you. They're not going to listen to you. And uh, it's a great thing to get a word from the Lord and to feel like you have a word from the Lord for somebody. But over and over, every time that Jeremiah has a word from the Lord, the, the word from the Lord ends with something like this but they're not going to hear you. They're not going to listen to you. They're going to ignore you. They're going to make fun of you. They're going to mock you. Um, they are going to imprison you. You're going to deal with all kind of obstacles because they're not going to hear the word of the Lord. And over and over in Jeremiah's life, he is given a word, and then when he goes and gives the word, he gives the word, and then exactly what the Lord says is true. The people reject him. The people don't hear the word of the Lord, but Jeremiah is simply a witness to the people. He is simply a word. So uh, that doesn't happen anymore, Bishop, in 2024. As soon as you get a word from the Lord, everybody in the church just receives it and goes home and says, that was for me. I'm changing completely. Uh, hallelujah. Amen. <laughs> but, but this is the situation that he is in, and he gets to a point of frustration. He gets to a point where he's tired, where he's weary of constantly having the word of the Lord be rejected, to go and to preach the word of the Lord, to go and give the word of the Lord, and to be rejected. And he reaches this point to where he says, I'm just not going to make mention of him anymore. I am not going to speak anymore in his name. 
He says, I, I'm done with this. I'm, tired. I'm done with this. I'm through. I, I'm just, I'm going to go live by myself. I'm going to go hide out in the house. I'm just going to lay down here. I'm going to, to quit. I'm going to stop doing all of this, and, and, and I'm done. I'm through with it. I'm not going to make mention. Now, I know none of you in here have ever felt tired and weary and tired of doing what you're supposed to do and feeling like stuff isn't working and None of y'all have ever felt that. I know it's just glory to glory, cloud to cloud, just, I mean, constantly. Angels just walking with you and all of that kind of stuff. But, but, but Jeremiah says, I'm tired of it. I, I'm weary. I'm, I'm tired of dealing with it. I'm tired of fighting it. I'm, I'm tired of going through it. And, and all of a sudden, he says, I, I'm, I'm through. I'm done. I quit. I'm not going to make mention of him anymore, and I'm not going to speak anymore in his name. But Jeremiah said, I forgot to factor something in said, I forgot to factor in what was on the inside of me. said, I forgot to factor in what I had on the inside of me. And he says, but his word. He had his word on the inside of him. He said, but his word was in my heart as a burning fire shut up in my bones. He said, I forgot to factor in the fact that God had given me a word, and that word was on the inside of me. And when I said I was going to sit down, I was going to quit, I was going to fold my arms, and I wasn't going to do it anymore, I was throwing in the towel and I was done, I forgot that God had put a word on the inside of me. And he said, that word became like a fire. It was burning on the inside of me. He said, it felt like my bones were on fire. It felt like I was on fire on the inside. And he says, I was weary with forbearing. I got tired of trying to fight it. And and he says this, I could not stay, that I couldn't stay down. I tried to get down. I tried to quit. I tried to throw in the towel. I tried to say I'm done with this. I tried to say I'm through living this way. I'm tired of trying to do it. But he said there was something on the inside of me that would not let me stay there. And Jeremiah was simply talking about the Word of God. Can I tell you, when you get this Word on the inside of you, uh, you might say I'm going to quit. Uh, I'm going to throw in the towel, uh, and I'm done. But can I tell you, this Word is alive. Uh, this Word is quick and powerful and it'll get on the inside of you and when you say I'm done and I'm going to quit and I'm throwing in the towel you're going to come to a point where you're going to be like Jeremiah you're going to have to say I can't stay here I, I can't tolerate this I, I can't do this I can't he he said I was I want you to see what he said he said I was weary I was weary with forbearing uncle G he was tired of fighting it he said, it was, it's good to see you here. I'm glad you came in. Glad you came to church. I love you. He, he said, he said I, was, I was getting worn out. Listen to this. I was weary, weary with forbearing. I was getting worn out trying to quit. Oh, Y'all need to hear that again. I was getting weary with trying to quit. It was wearing me out. The only thing that was wearing me out more than trying to do what God told me to do was trying not to do what God told me to do. He said, I was miserable. I, I'm going to tell you the most miserable person in the bar tonight is the person that's had an experience with God, that's had a touch with God, and they're trying to run from him. They're the most miserable person in there because there's a weariness that's going on. There's a forbear. They're trying to hold back. I'm telling you right now, I'm preaching to somebody. you got a backsitting son, a, black, a backsitting daughter. They're far out there, but I'm telling you that word is on the inside of them. Don't let them fool you. Don't let them. Trust me when I tell you the most weary person out there is that person that's got the word on the inside of them and they're trying to quit. Jeremiah said, I was weary with forbearing and I could not stay. I tried to stay down, but I couldn't stay down. I've come to preach to somebody tonight and tell you, you might be down, you might be low tonight, but you don't have to stay down. You don't have to stay down there. That word was like a fire on the inside of him that he could not stay down. And when Jeremiah is talking, Jeremiah does not have the experience that we have. Jeremiah is saying his word was like a fire that was shut up in my bones. He didn't even have the Holy Ghost. And Jeremiah said his word wouldn't let me stay down. His word wouldn't allow me to stay down. His word wouldn't allow me to quit. But tonight, I'm talking to some people. You've got more than just the Word in you. you got the Holy Ghost on the inside of you. You've got that quickening spirit on the inside of you. 
you who were dead in your trespasses and sin, but the Holy Ghost came in. And when you were dead in your trespasses and sin, the Holy Ghost reached down on the inside of you, and it picked you up. It breathed life into you. And friend, if Jeremiah couldn't stay down with simply the Word on the inside of him, I got good news. You can't stay down either because you don't just have the Word on the inside of you. You've got the Holy Ghost on the inside of you. And let me tell you something about the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost isn't built for staying down. The Holy Ghost isn't built for quitting. The Holy Ghost... The Holy Ghost isn't meant for staying. I know we have low moments. I know we have bad days. But I'm telling you, the Holy Ghost that's on the inside of you, it's not made for quitting. It's not made for staying down. Whoa. Huh. Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost isn't made for staying down. Amen. Now, I've, I've been like Jeremiah and said, I'll just, you know what, I threw out. I'm quitting out. I'm done with this. I'm tired of doing this. I know you're all spiritual and holy and everything goes your way and you've never crossed your mind before. <laughs> well, <laughs> but, but I'm just going to tell you, I've, I've had days where, hey, you know what? I, I, I'm just, I'm tired. I'm weary. I thought some things would start going my way. Feels like stuff's not going my way. And you, you know how it is. You kind of start. Y'all don't do that around here. Praise God. Hallelujah. No bite. The, I'm preaching the wrong message tonight. But you just, you know, I'm just, but I've been there before when I've thought that. But that Holy Ghost on the inside of me, that, that word on the inside of me, it, it just makes you miserable when you decide I, I'm, I'm done. I, you know what? I'm just going to dial it back a little bit. You know, you ever done that before? I'm not quitting. I'm just going to dial it back a little bit. I, you know, I'm, I'm not just throwing in the towel, but, you know, I'm just, I may not just show. I'm going to tell you what, that, all of a sudden that Holy Ghost on the inside of you because that Holy Ghost isn't made for staying down. That, that Holy Ghost on the inside of you is the same Holy Ghost that raised Jesus Christ from the dead. That, that Holy Ghost isn't made for staying down. It's not designed to stay down. That, that Holy Ghost is all about getting up. The Holy Ghost is all about helping you get back up again. The, the you can go ahead and prophesy like Micah prophesied. Rejoice not against me, O my enemy. When I fall, when I fall, I shall arise. That, that I, there may be a day that I stumble and I fall, but I'm going to go ahead and prophesy that I'm going to get back up because what I've got on the inside of me isn't designed to stay down. It's not designed to quit. I, I'm going to go ahead and prophesy that when I fall, I shall arise, that I'm going to get back up again, that, that I might have had a bad week. I might have had a bad month. I, I might have been away for a long time, but I'm going to get back up again. I'm I, you might be standing good tonight. Go ahead and say it right now. When I fall, I shall arise. I, I, might, have had, I might have had a stumble. I might have had a fall, but, but I'm going to get back up again. I, I'm not going to stay down. I refuse to stay down. I, I refuse to stay out. because. Woo. Woo. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You see, if you don't preach with me, I bring my own aisle runner. Grant can preach this way. He preaches about a rise and all. Grant, come preach for about 30 seconds about a rise. Tell them they can get up. You got it? Go ahead. It doesn't matter what circumstance you're in. You better just go ahead and prophesy. You're going to get up. We've got to get up no matter what. We've got to praise them. We've got to praise them. I can call them. I want my 10-year-old boy to know you can get up when you fall. I want my son to know when you stumble and make a mistake, it's time to get up. When you fall, you can get up. I want everybody in this house to know you got permission to get up. You got permission to get up on your feet and say, I'm going to take what God said I can have. I'm going to possess what God said I can have. Amen. I want our young people to know you can get up. I want our young people to know when you make a mistake, you can get up. I want our young people to know when you fail, you can get up. You can get up. You can get up. You don't have to stay down. You don't have to beat yourself up. You can get up again. You can. Woo. Yes. Woo. 
tell your neighbor, you can go ahead and get up. You can go ahead and get up. Tell that neighbor next to you, you can get up. You can get up. You can get up. Somebody needs to worship him right now. The Holy Ghost is in this house right now. You need to go ahead and praise him right now. Hallelujah. We got plenty more to preach, but I feel the Holy Ghost in this house right now letting somebody know you can get up. You don't have to stay down. You fall. You can get up right now. Maybe you've been down for a little while, but you can get up. If, the, if there's one thing I know about a fall, if you've fallen, anybody in here ever fallen in public? How many of you, after you fell, you were so proud of yourself? Before you got up, you just rolled around on the ground and said, hey, everybody, look at me. I doubt it because a fall is embarrassing. I know the, I, the Holy Ghost is here. Just sit down just for a minute. Am I okay, Uncle G? Bishop, y'all all right? Okay, all right. Okay. Because a fall is embarrassing. I, I, I mean, I, I've, I'm not talking about a little stumble where you hurry up and you get up. Nobody sees, but you just pour a little muscle on your leg, and for the next day you're just going to limp a little bit. I'm not talking about that kind of fall. I'm talking about the kind of fall where they hear you three aisles over in the grocery store. You knock all the pickle jars off the shelf where you make a mess of it. And there's a part of you that just wants to lay there with your eyes closed <laughs> and just hope everybody leaves the store and everybody gets away. And all. <laughs> because it's embarrassing. And, it, it, and, and I'm preaching to the people that you had a little stumble and you, you can get back up again. But I, I'm also preaching to the people you've had a fall and People know about it, and people have seen it, and people have talked about it. I've come to tell you, you can get up too. You don't have to lay around in that mess. You don't have to stay down there. That Holy Ghost that's on the inside of you telling you to get up, I want you to respond to that. That's the Holy Ghost saying, I'm not designed to stay down. I'm not designed to stay down here. You don't have to keep beating yourself up about it. You don't have to... You don't have to keep on yourself about it. You can get up again. That, the just man, the Bible says, he falls seven times, but he just gets up again. What, what makes him just is he just keeps getting up, saying, I'm going to keep on going. I might have fallen, but I'm going to keep on getting up. I'm going to keep on going. I, I feel to tell somebody tonight, it's time to get out of that pity party and say, I'm going to get up. I can't stay here. I can't stay in this stuff no more. That voice you're hearing on the inside saying you got to get up. You need to hear the voice of the Lord. It's time to say, I'm going to get up. I'm getting up out of this place. I, I'm not going to stay down in this low place. Woo. I'm telling you, the Holy Ghost isn't made for staying down. It's not made for staying down. It's not designed to stay down. The, the whole, everything about the Holy Ghost is going up. It's getting up. Every, Everything about this world, everything about your enemy is going down, but everything about the Holy Ghost is going up, and that's why you feel that battle. That's why there's that war going on. But I'm telling you tonight, you've got permission to get up. You've been filled with the Holy Ghost. If you haven't been filled with the Holy Ghost, i got good news for you. Tonight, you can leave here with the Holy Ghost, and the Holy Ghost is going to help you get up out of that mess that you're facing, out of all of that junk that's going on in your life. The Holy Ghost wants to pick you up out of that. It wants to lift you up. You better believe the Holy Ghost is about getting up. You better believe it. Whew. My Bible says, for the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God. Whew. <laughs> and the dead... In Christ, Woo. been filled with his spirit, baptized in his name, and died. The Bible says they're going to rise first Woo. because the Holy Ghost isn't about staying down. That Holy Ghost is designed about getting up. And if you've been, I, 
Woo, I feel the Holy Ghost here right now. I don't care how long they've been in the ground. I don't care how long they've been buried. If they've been filled with his spirit, there's a moment coming when Jesus comes back, when he comes down with the voice of the archangel and with the trumpet of God, when he comes back, everybody that's been buried, they've got to get up again because the Holy Ghost is not about staying down. The Holy Ghost is made to get up. And when you get up that time, you let the devil know that's the last time. I'm ever going to have to get up. That's the last time I'm ever going to stumble. That's the last time I'm ever going to fall. This thing's about getting up. You can get up tonight. You can go. You can get up out of that mess. It's made to get up. Somebody needs to get out and go ahead and worship him. Go ahead and thank him that you can get up. That Holy Ghost is made to get up. That Holy Ghost is designed. Woo! Oh. Hallelujah. You can remain standing. I, I'm, I'm wrapping up. I'm done. Woo. The dead in Christ are going to rise first. Woo. But it doesn't stop there. Then the apostle Paul goes on to say, then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up that, then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. I think there's a reason we're meeting him in the air because this Holy Ghost is not designed to stay down. It's designed to get up and we're going to meet him in the air. Ha. Woo. But I, the last few words of this verse, Uncle G, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. There is never going to be a microscopic second that I am ever going to be separated from the Lord. I am going to be in his presence. Oh. For all of eternity, I don't have to worry about another stumble. I don't have to worry about another fall. I don't have to worry about another bad day. I don't have to worry about another tear. I don't have to worry about another sickness. I don't have to. I'm going to be with him forever. Friend, I'm telling you, that's a good reason to get up because I'm getting out of this place. I'm getting up because I'm leaving this world behind, and I'm going to be with him forever. Hallelujah, I feel the Holy Ghost in this place. I, whoo, you can go ahead and settle it. I'm going to get up. I might have stumbled, but I'm getting up. I'm getting up out of this. I, I'm not staying down here. I'm not, no, 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 I'm not going to miss that. Whoo, there's coming a moment. He's coming back for his bride, and his bride is going to get up. Whoo. No more stumbles, no more falls. No more sickness, no more pain, no more tears. We're going to get up. And it's going to be the last time I ever get up. Because after I get up then, I'm done. I'm going to be with him forever. I, when that devil's on your shoulder talking to you about your fall, you say, yeah, I fell, but I can get back up. But everything I read about you is just constantly going down, down, down. You're going to be cast into the lake of fire. You're going down to the side of the pit. You're going down. But I can get up. I can't stay here. I've got to get up. I, I rebuke every voice trying to tell you that it's not for you. I rebuke every voice saying you can't get up. That I'm telling you tonight, you can make up your mind. I'm getting up. I'm leaving this stuff behind. I want us to come. 
I think every one of us need to come in this. I want you to come down to the front. It's Sunday night. We're having a good time. And I think I'm letting you out a few minutes early. So you might as well come down here and say, I'm getting up. I'm getting up out of this stuff. I'm not going to stay down. I might have had a bad week. I might have had a bad few months. I might have had a bad year. I might have stumbled 20 years ago and still hadn't got up. But I'm getting up tonight. I'm not going to stay down. I'm going to get up. You got permission tonight to get up. You got permission tonight to get up. I come against every lie telling you you can't get up. You got permission tonight. Tell your neighbor you can get up. You got permission to get up. You got permission to get up. You got permission to get up. You might have stumbled, but you got permission to get up. Woo. Long as you got some breath in your lungs, you got permission to get up. I want you just to begin to lift your hands to him. I want you to begin to thank him. The Holy Ghost is in this place tonight. He's going to help some people get up. That's it. That's it. Go ahead and say, I can't stay down. I can't stay down here. You need to respond to what you feel telling you to get up. You need to respond to what you feel on the inside of you saying you can get up. Go ahead and respond to that. Go ahead and be sensitive to that. Go ahead. You can get up. You might have fallen, but you can get up. You might have made some mistakes.